In this video, we are going to continue to talk about lining in P-Ray for 3ds Max. And in the previous video, we created some exterior setup for our scene using the sunlight and the scanlight, sun, the V-Ray sun and V-Ray sky. And we also saw the difference between using environment and dome light and uh, the V-Ray sky map. So they all look pretty similar but they have different little differences and you can work also with uh, more uh, of them so we also talked about the v-ray frame buffer panels that we have in the left here the history where we can store all the passages that we are doing in our in the development of our uh, scene and our rendering so everything will be saved there and every time i want to retrieve a previous phase of my work, I can always go back and see all the steps, all the passages that I did. So it's also giving me the size and also the timing of each render. So I can study and understand uh, how the timing changes, how the duration of the render changes in or according to different setup like uh, the illumination, global illumination setup direct and indirect we can see how we can improve the render using uh, more advanced settings and more bounces but also how this will affect the timing now we also talked about the noise level or the the, the noise um, issue that uh, we can find when the render is not going to be like high quality so our first objective is to get rid of that noise and we can do that by increasing the performance, increasing the, the quality and uh, so the, the render setting basically or we can use also some extra features in post-production that we're gonna see later on like the denoiser. Now if you press A and B here button you can also compare two different uh, render that you stored in the history panel. So once the history panel is activated and set up, you can always go back there and compare, for example, in different settings, which render looks best, which one has more noise, and so on. So this is an extra feature, an extra tool that is really handy, really helpful when you are at the beginning and you are testing out your scene with different uh, lights or different materials or different uh, parameters for the uh, render settings and you can switch from vertical to horizontal. You can also do a uh, four render comparison here. So if you set A, B, C, D, you can compare four different renderings together to see the differences. So it's an extremely helpful tool to go there and analyze what you are doing so far, what in the first steps here. Now this is a black render, so I'm gonna delete it. This is another icon there to delete the renderings. If I double click, I can go to the rendering there. And so these are, you know, different uh, handy tools that you can use with, with the history panel. It's a really helpful tool. Now in the right side, we have the layers panel. We saw how we, with the layers, we can change the effects in post-productions, like the exposure. And um, let's go back to render setup. And this is the global illumination section where we introduced in the previous video where we changed the primary engine, secondary engine. And for external brute force, it's fine. So you can set up both to brute force. So we talked about global illumination. We introduced a lot of aspects that we can also use in our interior scene. So again, I'm gonna create a plane, a standard plane here. And in this video, we're gonna study artificial lighting, so no natural light, no sun, no sky, but we're going to use other type of lights. And so I'm going to create a, a, something real quick here to represent my interior scene. So I just need a couple of walls, a pavement, and then I'm going to bring in some assets from Chaos Cosmos as usual. So some, some people, something to test the, the scene and the global illumination, especially. So in this case, the global illumination is going to work a little bit different from before because we are not in an exterior. We are going to have less light because we don't have direct sunlight 
uh, our scene will be a little bit occluded. We're gonna have a lot of shadows and a lot of noise because uh, when we are in an interior, the noise issue will be more because we're gonna have less uh, quantity of light. So the the more the more light we have, the more light sources or the more intensity of the light, the less the noise will appear. Now you can see also I've given some colors to these different uh, elements. They are not materials yet, but they will work to show up a little bit of glow illumination and also color bleeding. So I've added here a simple object. You can add whatever you want. You can add a statue, a sculpture or whatever. And let's go to the toolbar, to the V-Ray toolbar right now. I'm gonna start with the V-Ray ambient light, which is similar to the environment or the dome or the sky because it's gonna give us kind of a generic lighting into the scene. So I'm gonna click there and place it whatever you want. You can place it inside, you can place it outside. It doesn't matter in this case the position of the source because this is gonna be again something generic, something that is gonna it's not gonna have a defined source. It's not gonna project defined shadows. So let's switch to the interactive rendering in the viewport there. So IPR and I can see that if I move it around, nothing is gonna change. So this will not affect the final result of this lighting. Now, we already saw the dome light in the previous video. And here, again, we have similar parameters. So we have the color, we have the intensity. Now, if I set up this to be total white, I can see how colors are working in this global illumination uh, scenario. So I can already see here, how uh, the colors are starting to bounce around. They're not bouncing too much because this is an, not a strong light. It's not a projected and concentrated beam of light. It's something really generic, but it's starting to showing me, first of all, the scene, otherwise it would look totally black. So I'm not working with the environment now, I'm just working with the ambient light. And this is giving me this kind of a basic lighting that I can use in any scene, just uh, not to have the total uh, black situation. So I can already see how the, the the global illumination render engine is starting to work. Okay, now um, I want to work here with the interactive rendering directly in the V-Ray frame buffer and I want to, as usual, lock the perspective view, otherwise it's gonna move around and it's gonna be annoying so always remember to lock the the view in order to work a little bit more comfortable and we're gonna see that now other type of lights now if I go in the creation tab also I can find the lights that I can find in the toolbar so I have a couple of options to work with the light now I'm gonna set the intensity here real low because I really want to use this just as a base the basic of my interior lighting. I want to the I want to work more with the other lights, so I don't want this to, to be too bright. And I will save the first render there in the history with the plus icon. So then I can see as usual all the steps, all the various passages that we will do. And then let's go with the next one. So we already saw the dome light in the previous video can be used for a sky, but can be used also as an ambient light, similar to the one that we're using. Now the next one is gonna be this spherical light. And I'm gonna move this. Okay, you can see there it, it plays the spherical light on the floor. Now I can also go to the standard and you 